How's it going? Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. I got the oven heating up and we're going to normalize these and heat treat them. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. So I got the oven heating up and I'm going to normalize these knives first. If you guys have watched any of my videos before, you know I always use the tool wrap, the stainless steel tool wrap to do it. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to normalize one with the tool wrap and one without it. Make sure to like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I got all kinds of links down below from my website which has shirts like this and a few knives and all that other good stuff. All right, enough talk, let's just get to the work. So there we go, one in and one out. I got halfway through doing this and I remember what I wanted to do was put two or three in one sack, but that's okay. We'll do that on the next heat treat. Cause really, you only need one container. You could probably put like five or six knives in here. And I didn't put any paper in there. So we'll just see how that goes, but no paper. I usually put paper or something to burn the oxygen up, but We'll see how it goes. I think I actually did that the last video. But uh, go watch it and tell me. <laughs> I think the oven's about up to heat. So uh, I'll meet you over at the oven. All right, here we go. Already up to 1500. That was quick. By the time I set up all the cameras and got this wrapped, it was at 1500. Man, I'm so glad I replaced those elements because, man, this thing is like two or three times as quick. All right, here we go. In the, in the, in the oven. Woo, it's hot. Hot in the oven. <laughs> 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll be back. Dumbass Dave, I guess I should have worn my glove. <laughs> the oven heated up too fast. I didn't have time to think. <laughs> I better put a glove on and get these all uh, rightened up and stuff like that. So, Woo. There we go. I don't want anyone to say I was cheating. <laughs> All right, 15 minutes. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna leave them right here. That way you can see, you know, the different colors and stuff. Of course you won't see the different colors in that one, but <laughs> you'll see how this one changes colors. Look how black and look at all the oxides already on that. And that's just the first cycle. We're already down to 1350. So I'll go ahead and give that a few more minutes and throw it in. All right, here we go. Back in 1300. Whew, look at all the oxides on that. <laughs> Man, these gloves suck. I need to find some better gloves. I can feel it burning right there on my finger. The old gloves didn't do that. 
I'm not heat treating today. I'm just normalizing because I wanted to cool down and then I could paint up the hormones and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, I'll see you back here. When Actually, it's just going to be the same thing. Pulling them out and, you know, it's going to get blacker. I'll, when I'm finished with all the cycles, I'll come back and we'll open them. All right, let's cut this one open. Whoop! Did it get me? <laughs> it almost got me. That little piece right there, I felt it. So now, you tell me, which blade would you rather have? I mean, well, some scale fell off, so it's it's not too different. There's a little bit. Well, here it's kind of bad, but can we see that? You know, so honestly, maybe it doesn't make too much of a difference. I mean, you can, you can see it all here, but that can come off easily. I do think what I'm going to do from now on is put two or three in the same bag. You judge. I mean, there is scale, but that can knock off pretty easy, so it's not too big of a difference. So this is nice and shiny. And, I mean, this is nice and colorful and clean. No scale at all, nothing. Where you can see it build up here and here, but it's just a little bit, so maybe you don't have the foil or stuff and don't want to do it. Your decision. I'm just doing the experiments. <laughs> so we got everything here. Got our knives ready, all that good stuff. Got my refractory cement. I'll put this down in the links and all that. It's just, you know, high temp refractory cement. Now, I got on eBay and I found some of that gun gum for exhaust. You have to order from uh, England. In fact, on my Instagram, I asked people if they knew how to find it and stuff. But, you know, I thought it, shipping would be like three or four times. It was five bucks for the can of it. And then five bucks for shipping, so it wasn't that bad. It'd probably take ten days to get here or something, but it'd be interesting. That's what Niels Vandenberg uses, Black Dragon Forge, and then Alex Steele used when he did that Hamon, which he got from Niels Vandenberg too. But anyway, now that we're gonna put the clay on, oh, I went to the art store and bought some brushes so I can paint it on. Now here's the big difference about wrapping it and not wrapping it. Now I've got to take sandpaper or something and get all these oxides off and clean it up. So that's the question. Do you want to just take it out of the wrap, spend a little bit more for the wrap, you know, wrap 100 knives and not worry about it? Or do you want to spend time hand sanding, cleaning the blade off so you don't have to worry about the scale and all that falling or knocking the clay off and all that? You answer. I can't answer it for you. I know which one I'm going to do from now on because I hate hand sanding, but some people might like it. And, you know, if you're not doing hormones, it might not be that big of a deal to you because you're not putting clay on. But, you know, we got to do these things. Or I have to do these things. I, I read a hundred different things in the forums and on YouTube and all that stuff. So I want to see for myself. But like I always say, just because it works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work the best for someone else. Here comes the lecture. <laughs> all right, let's get on to this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of refractory cement down. Got some popsicle sticks here. Let's uh, make a little hole here. Pour a little bit of water. We'll just dilute this uh, just a little bit. Or a lot. One of the two. <laughs> uh, we'll add some more clay for the fun of it. Why not? Maybe we get a little Bob Ross on here. <laughs> oh. Here, we'll just paint this one up since we don't have to worry about it. Use the big brush for, you know, the thick parts. You don't want to go too close to your edge. Now maybe we'll paint a little tree, right? <laughs> oh man. I just watched a big old documentary about Bob Ross and where all his paintings are and stuff. That dude's a trip. 
Alright, nice and thin. Now we just hang it up, wait for it to dry. Then we can put some anti scale on it and all that good stuff. All right, now let's clean these off. Got me some 40 grit paper here. Yeah, see that's the thing, look at that. 40 grit and it it ain't coming off. Now these are pretty heat treat bevels and stuff like that, so I don't really care about the grind lines and stuff or how it looks because it's all coming off at the grinder. That doesn't mean I enjoy the hand sanding. <laughs> yeah, look at it all falling off. I didn't think it was that bad, but see, I was wrong. Well, I'm glad I did that experiment because I was wrong. I just spent like 10 minutes. That was a whole lot of scale. Look, this is 40 grit. I'm sitting here with 40 grit. Now, after heat treat, I'm going to have to surface grind the flats and all that, and I'll redo the bevels, you know, because I leave that thick line, but, yeah, man, you know, like I said, if you're not doing hormones, it might not matter, but, man, <laughs> I'm always rapping from now on, but I hate hand sanding. I can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, number two up. Now we just have to wait for them to dry and we get out the anti-scale and paint them all up. So here we are the next day. Everything's all dried up, ready to go. I actually remember to take pictures of the thumbnails before I heat treat them, I always forget. And so it's like just pictures of fire and stuff. But whew, man, I keep saying this in this video, but I love that I put those new elements in. By the time I set the cameras up and all that, it's all messed up to heat. Now this is anti scale, and I've talked a lot about uh, Niels Vandenberg from Black Dragon Forge, but I always DM him back and forth on Instagram. He gave me a few ideas for anti scale that he uses, but I don't have the products here, so I'll have to do that in the next heat treat video to test it out. Go follow him on Instagram and tell him Dave said what's up from Evader Knives. <laughs> show him some love, cause man, a lot of the tips that I show you guys, I got from him. Yeah, this is the anti-scale you buy, uh, ATP 641. This is the paint on stuff. You can buy this, the, the powder that you put on and then heat it up as the knife heats up. But I found that to be kind of inconsistent and I didn't really like it. I like painting it on, letting it dry, putting it in the oven, and you're all good. So we're just going to take a popsicle stick. This is why I have hundreds of popsicle sticks all over. You can see it's kind of gummy on top. Oh, actually it didn't dry up that much, but if it does dry up a lot, just add some water and you'll be good to go. Stir it up. I thought I'd have to add water, but it doesn't look like it. It's still pretty good. So we're just going to paint in between the lines. More Bob Ross. <laughs> I don't know any other TV uh, painters that well, so. <laughs> and I grew up with Bob Ross. <laughs> now you're going to want to put it on real thin. We don't want it thick. Maybe the next one I'll be smart and start with the back, huh? <laughs> that way the paint will thin out. The paint. That way. The anti-scale will thin out by the time I get it up, hang it up to dry. Shouldn't take that long to dry. So yeah, I'm just going to dip this thick, paint the back. 
paint right over, paint right over that scale from the normalization. <laughs> Just because we have a little bit of scale doesn't mean we need a lot, right? <laughs> there we go. Voila! Now I just have to wait for the oven to come up to heat. And uh, that will give these time to dry. And we're good to go. That's one good thing about the clay from the hummus. Once it dries out, it's a good place to hold the knife. Until you paint your hand. <laughs> I'll meet you over at the oven. Alright, we just hit 1400. This one's pretty much dry. Because I started with the back first. So let's hit this one in there first. I'll be back. We're at 120. I'm going to turn this off. Actually, uh, 126. Let me stir it up a little bit here. Sure. You know, bootleg blades, you, you keep showing that pump, and I actually bought a submersible pump, but I keep forgetting it to put it in here, so. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I just dropped some oil. You can see that. Oh, I got to get the smoke alarms. I'll be back. It's been in. It's hit 1,500 about two or three minutes ago. I always forget about the smoke alarms. <laughs> Let's check it now that I stirred it. Yeah, 121. We're perfect. If you guys watch my old videos, I used to have the thermal couple and I put it in there. It's like, wait, man, I got a heat gun. Why don't I just use that? If anything ever goes wrong, it lands on the blanket. I'm trying my Canon uh, 18 to 55 on this one, and I got my Sony on this one. So we'll see how that goes. All right, enough talk. Let's get this out of here. And into the fire. Woo. That's why I put the smoke alarms up. Last time I forgot. <laughs> See, I move it up and down, back and forth, all that. So that should be, uh... man, look at all this smoke. That should be almost as good as the pump. But I would like to try that pump. Wow, the clay actually stayed on this time. All right, let's make sure she's good. We're already back up to 1492. Let me open this door a little bit. Cool off some so uh, I can put that other one in. <laughs> See, that's why you put the clay on thin. Oh, some of it fell off that side. Let's go ahead and knock it off while we're here. Wipe this all off. While the blade's still hot. Get all that anti-scale off. much as possible maybe some of the look that's a that stuff that's from the normalization that's where I didn't hit it with the sanding paper all right let's let that cool down here we go number two I gotta get that fan set up Woo, it's smoky in here all right we're down to 1421 good we'll get it to calm down Woo. <laughs> I'll be back all right I'll test these after I pull the second one out I was going to take them up on my HRC tester, but I always forget, you know. I'll put a hormone build on there, and I'll be like, man, why is it getting such a low reading? I can't really test the bevels on the HRC, but I got files, so we'll see what we're doing. Gloves. Just check this real quick. 132. That's why I let the oven cool down a little bit. The knife is going to heat up the oil, so it gives it a little bit of time to cool, all that good stuff. Let me wipe off uh, these. I always forget that part. <laughs> Here we go. Makes better effect for the camera, right? <laughs> Don't want that smoke in my face. Oh, all right. Agitated a little bit. 
No, don't drop it. <laughs> I almost dropped it that time. Oh, we got a play on there. Nice. Man, not only did that clay stick, it stuck real good. <laughs> so, all right, let me cool this one down, but we'll get the 60, we'll get the HRC files and, uh, let me see, let me turn all this off too and plug it. We don't need this anymore. One thing about setting cameras up everywhere, you can't get to anything. All right, I got my 60 and my 65. Black is 65. This is 60. This is the cool down part. We can find the spot. If I'm not used to the flat profile of the Sony, so but at least it's got the flip up screen so I can actually look straight into the thing and probably looks like I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm just looking at myself. Damn egotistical bastard. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're skating and you're on scale. <laughs> sorry, if you're skating and you're on on scale, you might be getting a false reading. So you want to make sure you're testing out metal and not scale. <laughs> I had them backwards. I was trying to figure out why 60 was biting, but 65 wasn't. All right, here's the 60. I'm sitting here sanding and sanding in here. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this one again. Cause it seems to be biting. Let me go hit this on the grinder real quick. Because it seems to be catching, but I don't know if that's scale or not. So I'm gonna hit this on the grinder real quick. And then by the time that cools down, we'll see. I went and hit it on a 120. Got all that, most of the scale off. There's still some there. I hope I don't have to redo this, but we might, you know. Oh, see? That's why I don't like scale. There's the 60. Light glass, 65. So it might even be higher than the 65. But all that scale that I left on there and didn't take off. Yeah. See, we're biting back here where the hormone was, but yeah. Damn scale. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, that's the 60. This is the 65. Yeah, I was, man, scared me. I thought I had to redo it again. But hey, if it happens, you gotta do it. You can't fake it and be like, oh no, it came out right. Now here's the one with the, yeah, see, look. Here's the one I put in the package. Here's the one I put the anti scale on. <laughs> We're trying to do experiments here, figure out what's best, but uh, you know, I had to go regrind that to test it and all that. But that's a good, uh, I'm glad that happened because that shows you when you're uh, skating the file on on uh, scale and decarb or whatever you want to call it, you'll get false positives. I'm going to put these in for one temper. Before I clean them off, we're just going to temper them one time, 400 degrees, two hours. Man, that clay really stuck right there. We got to uh, surface grind these and all that stuff, but let me get these in the oven. Whew, I thought I failed, which it happens every once in a while something just is off or something and uh, But I'm glad I went and, and grinded that scale off. I can't lie to you guys and say yeah, it worked look <laughs> so, All right, let me get the oven set up All right, so we're out of temper boom We only did one cycle now We're gonna have to go over to the grinder and take all this stuff off you know, get it right down to the metal to see if we have any warps to get out or anything like that. I could use my surface grinder, but it's just easier to throw the magnet on and just hit it. All we're going to do is take it down the flat surface. All right, I'll meet you at the grinder. Now, I got these on my Amazon links. They're called strong hand magnets. They got the switch on them and off. You can use a regular welder's magnet like this if you want, but when you get up to your higher grits and you scratch your knife, 
I, I don't know what to tell you. These are just better. You know, some people said put tape on it, but then you have to tape your knife and untape your knife. And, yeah, but if you can't afford one of these, then get a regular one and take all the extra steps when all you have to do is flip a switch here. You know, I'm just giving you the options. I'm not telling you which one is better or which one is worse. This one I've had for four years. I paid a little extra up front, but man, they come in real handy. All right, let's get one on here. And I don't think this is that worn. It's just a 120. Like I said, we're just going down to the metal. Right, let's get to it. Yeah, I like to do kind of like a figure eight pattern and then flip the knife over and make sure. Because the one thing with using a magnet like this is you tend to either push to this side or that side or up or down. So, you know, you start taping your blade. So you just kind of want to hold it lightly and, and you know, do figure eights or whatever you do when your hand's sandy. But just watch your pressure because you don't want to put too much pressure this way or too much pressure that way because then you will warp it. After tempering, then we can go back and you know, figure all that other stuff out. You know, when I surface grind, I'll start at like a 60, take off a few layers and, and build up to 240, but all right. And when you see me putting my hand up here, I'm not pushing in. I'm just holding the knife against the belt, you know? If I was to let it go, see, no pressure. I'm just, I don't want you pushing in and taking off more than the surface area. That comes after temper. We just, like I said, we just want to check this for straightness. And I see some people that before heat treat, they'll go up to like, you know, 400, 800, these really high grits. But then you heat treat it and you get this. I, I just don't understand doing the work twice, but for some people it works better. So try both. I go to 120 and then heat treat. If you want to, try going up to 400 and 800 and see if it's easier after heat treat to resand it. Maybe it will be. I'll meet you over at the uh, surface plate. All right, so make sure to clean down your surface plate. I'll tell you one thing that was giving me a false positive for a long time, and I see it again. When I mark my blades and I put the dicom on there, so I got, this is acetone. So you take some and, and you know, get that ink off. Cause that ink is a thin layer, but man, it'll, it'll mess up just that little bit. It might build up just enough to throw you off. And you know, I, I, it was probably a couple heat treats back or whatever. Every blade I put down had the same mess up in it. And I was like, what's going on? And I cleaned it off with acetone and sure enough, but remember, uh, before I put this in the temper, I said it looks off. There, it's straight. Yeah, I thought it looked off. This one's pretty good. Yeah. No wobble in it or nothing, so. All right. There we go. So, this one's good. Let me get a piece of steel and I'll show you what I do. <laughs> Does this look familiar? <laughs> If you watch the ceramic platen video, this is that piece I messed up. Remember I said it'll come in real handy? <laughs> so we're flat here, but we wobble here. So we flip it over, you know, this is the wobble. So you want to flip it over, put it down, put your clamp on, right where you, right where it's, where you see the pivot. Maybe a little bit past straight just a teeny bit not much and uh back in the oven and then we're done two cycles that's it they're both back in the oven second temper you probably can't hear the oven it's behind the mic <laughs> thanks for watching make sure to like if you like dislike if you don't 
comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. I got shirts. Uh, I'm wearing an Alex Steele shirt. I don't have my shirt on. I got shirts on my website along with five knives and all my Amazon links. Everything's down in the description or up in the cards. Website, Amazon, all that stuff down in the description. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day. And as always, take it easy.